right now this is an amazing semi-final obviously could have been the grand final if they were on opposite sides of the brackets but it is not in the top left side of dragon skills as that is going to be our opening battleground of this semi-finals we are looking at the main base of the man who has won this tournament more than anyone else on this planet the frenchman representing team liquid it is clam And spawning over in the bottom right hand side, the man that shook the world back in 2018. And ever since, he's been a force to be reckoned with. It is Basilis Serral. Both of our team boys going at it, Kev. Mm, that is right. Didn't even think about that. It's just, uh, it's such an exciting best of five because of all the history that these two have with one another in this specific tournament, but obviously in other tournaments as well. Uh, you look at the last time that I saw them go up against one another. It was in the big open tournament at Bastilus Gren a little while ago. And Serral looked clean in that one. He got a trio and it was basically all Serral. But right before that, Clem did deliver one of the only two losses that Serral has had over the last few months in an online tournament. The one that Pig run. That was a nail biter. It went down to the wire. In the end, Clem won 4-3. In the end, it really does always feel that these two can get the best of each other on any given day. And especially in this tournament where Clem just goes Super Saiyan and he gets these wings. It's so damn exciting. I'm so curious to see what's going to happen here. And I'm also really curious to see if Sarah's going to build a lot of roaches throughout this best of five. Because over the last few months, Ben, he's actually been quite fond of the roach builds in this matchup. We'll even sprinkle in a couple of infestors to land some fungos in the early mid game and then use these roaches to obviously make it all the way up to Hive and get Lurkers and Vipers. And just talking about builds, Kev, these builds that they've both done are kind of weird. Like, Serral was doing some extractor tricking, so he got his hatchery down at like 15 out of 14, then he was 14 out of 14, then extractor tricked again for an extra drone, what, then making an overlord. So he definitely went about his build in a slightly different way than normal. And Clem, he's going for a good old-fashioned 2 one one here. And that is not something you often see and he's kind of hidden it he's thrown back the second barracks a little bit but so far and look look at serral i think this queen popped out way faster with this build than it usually does and that kind of thing when you see that and there's no lings on the way uh, whatever shortcuts he took ah they've got him into this position he's actually got some links out on the map as well very very peculiar he's got links in the main base of clam already so that's going to give him a nice little scout I mean, there has been a lot of talks, right, about doing different openings of uh, Zerg versus Terran, where you can go lower on the links. You can even skip out on the links. I think Eric has been a bit of a trendsetter about it. Uh, Pig has done a lot of analysis about it. I know Piggy is a big fan. Book with Rainer about it. He was not quite convinced yet, but yeah, you see the Zergs just have a different approach of the very early game. And well, we will see where this is going to lead Sarah. At least Sarah knows exactly what he's going up against. But a build scale. like 2 one, one in the hands of a man like Clem or Beyond, even when you know it's coming, you still really need to be on point when it comes to the defense. Yeah, both these guys have already played once today. Not in this tournament. They did play in the WTL. Both of them came out victorious. I'm not sure who Serral played in his uh, clan war over there, but Clem took down Lambo 2-0 and then Beyond 1-0. So he's already showcasing that he is in very fine form because to take down those names, you have to be. And Serral, I never see this man slouch, actually, not in the past few months. So these guys absolutely bring in their A game. And Kevin, you talked about it. Roaches, will we see them? Damn right we will. Roach Warren on the way quite early on for Serral as well. Yeah. Serral did play his match against Battleby. That was his opponent in his clan war a couple of days ago. That was played on Thursday mm. because there was a good chance, obviously, that Serral was going to be active on the final day of the ESL Masters. And we didn't want to let Serral play a clan war at two and then a very big match against maybe a guy like Clem. And it turned out to be Clem at 5 p.m. You want to make sure that these guys have an optimal Sunday and they can just do whatever makes them happy. That's a quick armory, Benny. We have a couple of Hellions out, more Hellions on the way. So we're going to get 16 Marines with a couple of Medivacs and a few Hellions that can morph into Hellbats. But Hellbats against Roaches, I, I feel like that's a bit of an awkward interaction. It definitely is. I mean, they're going to tank well, right? And that is a lot of Marines. And I mean, Serral is pumping out a lot of Roaches, oh, but so cool. these are almost kind of like... 
I'm going to make safety roaches because I don't necessarily know what's happening, I feel. But look at the work account for Clem. Yeah. This is super all in from him. Yep. So only 33 SCVs as Clem is not going to waste a second. He's going to stim forward immediately. Wants to grab a queen. Will get a queen. Is going to try to fight roaches in small numbers. Does get on top of a lot of drones already. What are the helpers going to go for? A few of the helpers were hesitating as they were battling roaches. Clem is getting a whole bunch of queens so far. Maybe that overlord as well. But he needs more workers, man, as he was obviously supply block the hellbats are keeping the roaches busy as the marines are stimming for four days and that is the economic damage that claim all was looking for it was indeed i mean we've got a few extra units rallied in but maybe he was hoping for a little bit more actually i, I know that sounds weird to say but running against these roaches i'm not sure that's something that he super expected but these extra little hellions lovely spore crawler micro by serral keeping as many of these drones alive as possible and ah just, this this game really comes down to a uh, a game of inches a game of centimeters if you will Clem is not yet done, though. He has no third CC on the way, and that is starting the tank production, the plus one on the way as well. Yep. Well, that third CC has been planted in the natural, so it's not good to be on location. Sarah is going to try to crank out as many drones as possible. I think it was a very good first wave for Clem in the end, but you're right. Clem can now not just sit back for the next two minutes and be like, oh, that, that was good enough, right? No. Clem does need to take advantage of the fact that he's got a much more mobile army. And what he did do with an initial attack ban is reduce the queen count. Reducing the queen count obviously is going to mean that Serral is going to have a harder time spreading creep. And marines off creep, I mean, they are cooking against roaches. As Clem seems to be concerned that Serral doubled down on roach protection perhaps and is attacking him, but that's absolutely not the case. Like, I do think that Clem needs to take advantage of the fact that he's got Metavax with boost, he's got Marines with Stim versus Roaches that were in low numbers and kind of slow and immobile. Mm, it's almost one of those things where it's like, okay, I got a lot of Marines, I'm going to have a lot of Marines, I want to wait for that plus one. But we see that that is kind of an anti-timing, because by the time you get that plus one going, you're against plus one, one, where your opponent's actually far ahead of you. Supplies are a little bit deceiving, obviously, because Roaches are not that efficient supply and several a little bit supply block but this is kind of the big explosion here this allows him to free up a lot of room and he's got that gas banked up there for a lot of ravages and you only really want to make ravages when you really need them and several needs them now and as soon as i say that he is pumping them out getting the roaches on the go as well mm, yes yep. be careful though Marines are going to find a couple of these roaches here. One roach will get picked off. That's about it. As Clem turns around, wants to battle more. He's going to get an easy cancel on this hatchery, though. That is inevitable. It's obviously very important that Serral cancels it. Cannot afford to lose all these extra minerals. And Clem's army is growing nicely, though, Ben. And I do always like the idea of Marine tank versus roaches and ravages. As Serral was thinking about going over that bridge, but that is one hell of a choke point. I definitely think that was a mistake. Maybe he's trying to bait Clem on going a bit too far away from the tanks. Clem uh, in the end lost perhaps a few more marines than he needed there though. But Serral is not quite transitioning, right? It's not like we've got an EM station pit. We've got the 2-2 two -two upgrades. This is the army as for a split second there. The tanks were not siege. I still believe in the firepower of this Terran army as the marines are standing strong on the left side. Serral does have a lot of roaches coming in from the right. It's kind of like they both won one side of the fight. But in the end, I think it is more than good enough for Serral as he completely resets the tank count. And that's obviously what he was hoping for. And as soon as he cleaned that up, he starts up the plus two range weapons here. So he was definitely, definitely respecting that push out of Clem. Now starts up the upgrades. And Clem, he is moving on to the next stage of the game where he can start adding on Marauders and stuff. But this third base, I think it's almost a goner at this point. That being said, quite a bit of bio is left over. It's just that upgrade deficit that he's suffering right now. It's only going to get worse as time goes by. Yeah, but it takes a little while before plus two missile attacks kicks in as Serral has an overseer flying into the natural. Could maybe contaminate the eBay there for a split second to create an even bigger upgrade lead. I still think it's going to be very hard for Serral to get in deep because there is that tank on the high ground and it feels that that tank is always safe. Clem for a split second there, pull the SCVs. Clem's going to have to kite back though because right now his tanks are not participating in the fight. So it all comes down to these Marines and the Marauders. A couple of Marines have already fallen. Seven SCVs going down. That is very acceptable on the side of Clem as Clem in the end holds strong and Ben, that was honestly mostly without any tank support. It definitely was, and Serral, he has to be careful here because he's in a bit of a pickle. He can't really back off without losses, but he doesn't really necessarily want to stay <laughs> either. And right now, look at all these slow links, Kev. These are the saddest slow links I've ever seen. 
Yep, Saros got 14 slow Zerglings on the battlefield as he's still firing up more and more links. But these links obviously are not going to have the best upgrades anyway. Saro really is bleeding out a lot of units. He was very committed. Uh, even though he had these upgrades on the way, he did manage to get that fourth base up and running. But that did not work out for Saro in the end. Uh, even if the tanks were not necessarily participating in the fight, Clem did a great job in figuring out when to kill, when to pull the workers, when to put them back into mining. And I think over the last minute, Clem has been able to get multiple big victories here on the board. As a widow mine that's permanently cloaked as well is going to make it into the center of the map. But Saro drops a couple of good corrosive balls. A very competitive game one here of the semifinals. As we've got drilling claws on the way on the side of Clem. The resources lost tab is really the tale of this story. Like, even though roaches aren't supply efficient they're meant to do their job and clem has just been trading really well because that that was a scary hold there like he had to pull svs at one point but he pulled just enough at the right point as well and he managed to trade pretty nicely against the army and Cyril, he's kind of in a position here where it's like all right what do i make out of this situation that i'm in because i doubt this is what he was planning because we got those links that came in very late there with the... Now they have speed, but now he's having to go to Bane links, the roaches, the tunneling claw roaches as well. It's, it's, it's a funny situation. Yep, it just kind of feels that whatever was planned is out of the window. And at this point, we are just getting messy. It's going to get sloppy. And it comes down to who is able to outmaneuver the other player. As Serral does have a couple of roaches looking to maybe sneak into the natural. But Clem is anticipating this as he has a missile turret right in the dead center of his natural. So that's going to give him the heads up. It'll be interesting to take a look at Clem's POV as he takes a look at his army right on the bottom right side. But now he sees all of these roaches. He is going to get the tanks at least. Uh, allow them to get a couple of shots off. But the two tanks do fall. But now that surprise element is kind of gone. And I think Sarah was hoping for more chaos of these roaches rather than, okay, two tanks. Like, you need a bit more than just two tanks to justify losing all these roaches and revealing the fact that you invested in Tunnel and Claws and Burrow. Yeah, I mean, it would be nice if there was something really gearing up behind it, like a hive being a little bit faster or something like that. The only thing that time really bought him was two infestors. Granted, they do have fungal now, I believe, which could actually very much spice things up, but and that's so many Widow Mines in the mix, Kev. So many Widow Mines. I mean, Cyril has to be super careful against this. Yep, Cyril's Ten supply takes... dying as well. Cyril's supply takes another dive. He does land a fungal, and he's trying to land a couple of these corrosive balls, but Clem is good at avoiding Novas in the other matchup. He is definitely good at avoiding corrosive balls, as that's a bit easier. Scan goes down. One of the infestors should get tagged there by the Marauder with concussive wow. shells. Yeah, I guess we had some Liberators harassing because I didn't see Liberators in the main fight, but we knew that they were out on the map. Cero is in trouble here in game one of the semifinals, as Clem has just been able to take phenomenal trades for quite some time. Plus two is kicking in for the bio as well. And Clem's supply ban in these fights, it's not struggling, it's not dipping, it's just staying strong above 180. And he's like 10 workers ahead as well. And I mean, he was fighting with an upgrade deficit in those fights, which is the crazy part, right? And now, now they're on even ground and Clem in one fell swift move here takes out a base and it's like, you know what? I can really dance around these roaches. Yep. And this is what we were mentioning earlier when it comes to the mobility of these units. Clem is able to look for damage, find free pickups. Zero does make it up to Hive, right? That's the silver lining for Yona Sotala here. That we have a couple of Vipers on the production tab. Bailing speed is going to finish up 14 minutes into a game very casually. Which just goes to show how odd this game has been. And that's all because of the initial opening by Clem, right? Clem obviously took a big risk by going for the build that he went for. And he said, I know that I need to do a lot of damage with this opening. But I believe that I can do that. Certainly, certainly does. And Clem just start up his 3-3. Three, three. Both of them getting their tier 3 upgrades going here for their uh, their upgrades on the Evo Chambers and Engineering Base. But here, I mean, Clem still has to be careful because he fights on creep, but lovely baiting there with the Marauders being ahead. And that is so many Widow Mines. Like, this, oh. th these Marauders being left behind to deal the damage against this Roach army. I mean, Serral really has nothing to deal with that. Nope, we have an Ultra List Cavern on the way, but it's going to take such a long time before Ultras ever make it out. Parasitic Bomb does go down on one of these medevacs, but Clem is very quick in pulling that Ooh. away. There are still a couple of mines here that have not fired yet. Oh, Cero is eating a lot of big mine shots as Clem is still harassing in the bottom left side too. It does really feel that Clem is very close to closing this game out. But against Cero, you definitely just want to do that as well. Wow, that was cool, by the way, burrowing the roach. 
against the widow mine shot in the end it still did some damage but we even have ghosts in the mix now as well so even if one or two ultras would already be out which is not the case snipes are ready I think Clem is very close to getting the job done, but Serral's still battling for everything All those Vipers. Viper flies into a Widow Mine, but that was the one that had no energy, but an EMP lands from the other side of the high ground. So once more, these Vipers are going to have to leech some energy from some of the buildings. I just don't think Clem is ever going to give Serral the time to get Ultras and Kiteness out. No, this is a very different playstyle to what we saw from Spirit. Clem just not giving Serral a moment to breathe here. He's just on the ball every moment every unit that he has it's on the other side of the map and he is ahead economically has been for quite some time this game you see that and he's still expanding behind it all and uh, this pickup micro from him is really really hard to deal with as well i mean serral's putting on a show he's putting up a fight some of the ling drags under the medevacs with the widow mines as well have been absolutely on point but he's just getting whittled down here Yep, Clem obviously does need to be a little bit careful, like you said. There are still banelings, something that you always have to respect, especially on creep. At the moment, Clem is having a good time sniping Ravages. As one more Widowmine deals a lot of friendly fire, Ben. You talked about it, more friendly fire from these Widowmines. I mean, that's the most amount of damage that Clem's army has taken in a while. Serral doing a great job running these links past the Terran army and making sure that these mines don't just damage the Zerklings, but also the Metavax and the Ghost. Uh, Clem's economy is just going completely untouched. He has even taken that base at 9 o'clock. And uh, I just don't know how much longer Serral can really do this. I mean, if we take... Like, Serral's being given a moment to breathe here. But then we look at all that blue on the map. And look, that moment to breathe, Clem's right in there. He's securing that 9 o'clock base, as you talked about. But he's also got the northeast base in the corner. And he's made it so easy. He's also got several sensor towers set up. He is just playing a phenomenal game. And Tempo... Oh, Tempo be thy name. That is what Clem is throwing at Serral. And Serral, yeah, it's almost like you can't keep up. Well, Serral is obviously just starved, right? He's in 63 drones and he's got no bank. It's not that Serral was still at least maxed out and he has a bit of money in the bank. Oi. And Serral's going to go on the aggressive in the top left side, lands a parasitic bomb, gets a couple of the medevacs, but... Fighting near a planetary, it just feels that that is impossible. Serral knows that he needs to make some magic happen here as one of the infestors gets Whoa. picked off by a widow mine. Big explosions. Clem has units for days. It feels that Serral sending everything that he has there, but it is never going to be good enough. GG gets called. Clem takes the 1-0 lead in our opening semifinals with a very aggressive initial build order very aggressive and i i almost want to go back and watch that replay just for myself just to be like okay what was several actually thrown at him because it was a 14 out of 14 hatch a 15 out of 14 pool and then a f yeah just really really kind of uh interesting from him and granted it got him the big scout on the on that second barracks which was big with the early uh lings also he could deflect uh, early reaper with the queen so a bit cheeky a bit tricky i don't mind him doing something like that in the first game at all because i think showing your opponent that you can be a little bit off the wall kind of thing and, and maybe like that map as far as maps go it's pretty good for terran let, let, let's be real so now we're going to get onto grass van for the second map in the pool and yeah i'm i'm looking forward to this series now like it's definitely a refresh it's definitely refreshing oh was it the wrong map aha yeah, yeah. wrong okay okay yeah, Clem says wrong map. The second map is going to be ancient, and that obviously has to be Serral's pick. Uh, as soon as this map got introduced, Serral oh, Sarah now says, no, it's not the wrong map pick. So this is interesting. Serral and Clem are disagreeing over the map order. Mind games, mind games. <laughs> yeah, no, we'll figure it out. Uh, okay, maybe it Press is fun. still. Press fun. And now Clem says, my bad. So apparently Clem <laughs> got it wrong. He was convinced. He's all smiles. Serral's all business. Just says, go, go, good luck. Um, you know what's interesting as well is you take a look at the worker graph of Clem in that previous game. And it's a graph that if you would look at it by itself, you're like, ah, oh, that's a TVP special, right? Like one of these builds where they cut out a couple of SCVs, then they build one, then they cut, then they build. But in TVZ, I'm really not used to seeing Terrans kind of cut SCVs this early on and putting themselves in yeah, such a committed spot. But obviously it does work. As it seems no. that Ben's... Oh. Oh, I was leaning over. I was like, I don't know if this fan next to me was like picking up kind of thing. I, I like uh, for a second there. So yeah, sorry, but no, you're right. The the fact that that build went in this hell back timing that took out like 15 workers, and then it's like, okay, you got to claw your way back. It was just a weird one because I 
Serral obviously did not anticipate that build. Like, he obviously did not, because it's like... Yeah, but like, he scouted so early, though. That's the funny you thing, right? Yeah, you see the 2-1-1, one, one, but then it's yeah. like the weirdest 2-1-1 one, one ever. It's like not using the reactor for your medivacs, you're using it for Hellions and an early armory, and then really late upgrades and stuff. Like, it was a very funny way of going about it, but it obviously paid off in dividends for Clem, just because he was probably more... Or he was very much more set up for a game with that opening, rather than Serral being. Well, here we go. Round two of our first semi-finals in the ESL Masters Europe Regionals. In the top left side, we are looking at the main base of our Finnish Zerg, representing Basilisk. This is Serral. And spawning over on the far east side, as our blue Terran from Team Liquid, it is Clem. I was going to say Clemmer, but then I was like, no, 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 I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there. I don't think that was a Pokemon then. No, Clemmer wasn't a Pokemon. Although, if Clem was a... Of all StarCraft 2 players, if they did turn into a Pokemon, Clem would be a damn cute one. <laughs> I believe it. A uh, more standard opening here this time around. Nothing too creative, nothing too weird. Or I was going to keep a close eye. It is obvious that Clem had a plan, right? Where he said... Sure, I can just play my very standard, straightforward TVZ because I'm incredibly good at everything I do. But Sarah is so damn scary and good in the matchup. And it seems that he just kind of wanted to set the tone immediately where he says, it's not going to be ultra standard, ultra macro oriented. I am willing to switch things up and basically not just keep you honest, but bring the fight to you very early on. Yeah, and it was... I mean, I haven't seen the most of Clem recently when it comes to his TVZ, but it felt very un-Clem to me. Like, if I think about what Clem was really showing several months ago, it was, I'm going to do this build where I go Reaper, I SV scout you, and then I play super damn standard behind it. No shenanigans, no weirdness. Sometimes he can throw out mech every now and then, and he was actually quite good with it. But, you know, for all intents and purposes, 95% of it was a good old-fashioned TVZ build order. And this game... I'm, I'm looking at this, Kev. There was no SCB scout from him. It's a Reaper. And then a Reactor straight away as well. So he's already doing things that I am not used to him seeing. Or not used to seeing of him. So really, really cool. Well, if there are a few things that Clem has been working on when it comes to TVC. And of course, in the grand scheme of things, a lot of builds will look similar and will look like, oh, we've seen this before. If there are some slight variations to certain build orders that he loves, you're not going to bust them out in, in the group stage early on and give your opponents more material to work with. You want to save it for the big moments when you have a playoff series against the Zerg like Lambo, Serral, uh, Raynor. These are the moments where if you've been experimenting with fine-tuning a few builds or just switching it up a little bit, these are obviously the moments, right? So it makes sense that Clem is not necessarily going to play the exact same TVZ uh, as he would do against the Zerg that he's heavily favored over. No, I mean, you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. And I mean, Zerg's have given him a little bit of trouble so far. You talked about a laser where he's 0-2 down and what have you. And, you know, he's, ob he's, ob he's obviously been to the lab, conjured some stuff up, been to the kitchen, brewed up something and good. Because here, 3cc before throwing down a factory. That's very unusual. And it is it is kind of like a 2-1-1 follow-up again, because he went for that second barracks before the factory. But yeah, he's just going about things in a very, very unusual way. And it seems like he's very prepared for the series. But Serral, he wouldn't be Serral if he wasn't getting some sick-ass scouts going on. Yeah, that was just four Zerglings by Serral. But Serral grabs two SCVs, gets the perfect scout in the main base. SCVs, excuse me, uh, Zerglings still running around in the nature as well. But this time around, Clem left a few Marines ready. But that's, I would say, a very lovely little start for Serral. The smallest of tiny, tiny investments getting actually a very solid return with not just the damage on the SUVs, a bit of lost mining time, but the picture perfect scout as well. So he doesn't even need to sacrifice that Overlord at this point. No, and Gressvan's definitely a larger map than the one that we played on prior. Obviously, it is splittable with regards to bases, and it's quite nice for getting your fourth and fifth base up as a Terran player. But Serral so far, off to a good start here. Those lings, you obviously make them to deflect the early on Reaper. The fact that you get anything after them at all, yeah, it's uh, that's more than good. And Clem, it's really going to come down to what he chooses to do here. It does like, look like it is going to be fairly standard follow-up with the double medevac getting the stim out. Hey, look, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very curious uh, what's uh, been going through Clem's head leading up to this one. 
Well, maybe he's also once more expecting more Roach play, but that doesn't really seem to be on the menu this time around. Don't know how much this Reaper has really been able to scout. Got a little bit of scouting done initially. Zero has been very Roach heavy lately in this matchup, and it's obviously brought him a lot of success. But I wouldn't this I wouldn't say that this is quite the map for it. Not impossible, of course. If you really want to do it, you can always do it. But I'm kind of happy to see Saro heading into Ling Bane. I do think that oh, this clam does find that Overlord as it was revealed immediately. I mean, this is a lot of Marines. It's a funny move out, obviously, as the first two Manifacts were not even quite there yet. Saro at the moment, Ben, has 14 Lings out. So these Queens really need to take a great fight here. And it seems like they will initially, yes. Yeah, Clem just disengaged. Uh, phew, that was close, man. With only 14 links, pretty scary moment there for Serral. Definitely is, definitely is. I mean, Serral did a good job kind of baiting, trying to fight for this creep. I mean, creep is everything in this matchup, isn't it? Like, vision is power, knowledge is power, and it really allows you to swallow up that Terran. And whenever you're a Terran, you see this creep, you can't really go on to it. So you have to deny it. And Serral, you can see here, he's just standing strong, fighting for every little bit of the map that he can. He has eked out a little bit of a supply lead here. A few extra drones as well, getting his Baneling speed on the go as well. And so far, very standard game. As Serral on top of his scouting at every point. Yep, let's drop the Evolution Chambers as well so he can slowly but steady start working on his upgrades as the Queens are once again battling the Marines. Need to be careful because especially with that one Reaper still in the mix. The Reaper is obviously great in soaking up the Queen shots, but that grenade can be tricky. And you don't want to see yourself end up with two Queens off creep there if you are Serral. We have a few links in the bottom side of the map. They could morph into Bane links down the line. I'm not expecting Serral to do that until Bane link speed is ready. Because slow Bane links, they have a very small chance in finding their targets off grip. I certainly do. Serral did just whip out a lot of drones just then. And he is getting ready to do that Bane link attack at the south there. Upgrade wise, Clem is about to hit that plus one plus one. And the also important combat shields with this makes these little pushes a lot scarier. The reactor's coming online for his barracks as well. So soon, it feels like this is the calm before the storm right now. Everything's about posturing, setting up for one another. But soon, Clem's going to go unleashed here. And uh, yeah, is Serral going to be ready for him? That's the question. This is already kind of nice for Clem as he gets a relatively easy cancel on the fifth base. Obviously not as impactful as getting one on the fourth base like we saw in the previous game. But it's something. Baneling speed is done, so we have to keep a close eye on the minimap and see if these Banelings will go for it. But it almost feels that Sarah at this point is waiting for the first big move out of Clem. The moment he sees a few more units and just these initial 8 to 10 Marines flying around with Medivac. As he spots a few more Marines at the top side, that could be the go time for these Banelings to see if they can get lucky. There is a safety tank that Clem left behind at the third base. That should actually be good enough as the second factory is done as well. Yeah, two safety tanks that we find. Oh, nice bailing connections, actually. That definitely slows down Clem quite a bit, more than you'd think, because a lot of this comes down to tempo. And having one side of the map being a bit worse than the other side of the map for you as a Terran, yeah, that definitely eases things up for Sarah a little bit. His drone count's amazing behind all of this, but Clem's been nice. microing or macroing like crazy behind, and Sarah, nice little split against that widow mine there. Yep, Clem is building a lot of Widow Mines, but he has not fired up Drilling Claws yet. I do feel like that should have been on the menu by now, as the second factory is done. He's producing three mines at a time, and I hope for Clem that he's not... Okay, there we go, that he won't forget it too long, because we're going this heavy on the mines. Obviously, that is an upgrade that we absolutely want to have. Clem is doing a masterful job at the moment, though, in containing creep. Like, maybe he hasn't necessarily pushed a whole lot of it back lately, but I do think that he's doing a good job in making sure it doesn't spiral out of control, as there are a few Banelings in the mix on the top side of the map as well. It's a slow burrow of the Widow Mine, and that's not going to get much done. But Clem is starting to outmaneuver Sarah here a little bit, as he does find a couple of drones, snipes a few Banelings, and he still has these units active on the top side of the map. Snipes a couple Banelings there too. You can really see that Clem is starting to feel it. Yeah, he's on fire here. Like, every little engagement that's happening, Clem is just making Serral bleed out just a little bit here, there, and everywhere. And this is how he plays. He wears you down. And whoa, that was Serral almost getting a medevac there. That would have been really nice for him. Would have definitely allowed him to breathe a little bit. But Clem, he's worked on this creep for a good five minutes of this game now. And finally, he moves on onto it with these Widow Mines. And lovely splits out of Serral. Counter splits at that. Mm. But Clem... Still getting the better of him. 
bit messy there that there wasn't an overseer right because you kind of think that if clem's army goes that far back that should have been a moment where Cyril would have been able to pick up at least a couple of these widow mines now it just gets problematic because those mines are fired they are still there Cyril's gonna try to go before they can get off their cooldown and he will get the cleanup so that is obviously good news for Cyril who fired up the accidental swarm most i do believe that burrow finished up as well so maybe we can get a couple of burrow banelings in the center of the map since clem has done such a good job in keeping creep at bay well that should allow Cyril to burrow bailings in very scary positions for Clem. This is Clem in tip-top form. This is Clem, like, absolutely peak, peak form. Look at that resources loss tab, by the way, right now. That really does showcase what's going on. 2.5k loss for Clem, 6.5k for Cyril. Cyril <laughs> still absolutely in this game. And that one swarm host <laughs> will be up to no good on the other side of the map. And if Cyril, like, he's so close to getting out lurkers, he's on hive tech, has the lurker den, is getting up to that range upgrade for the lurkers as well those sad sad swarm host but ah can he hold on can he weather the storm that is clem the widow mine count was very high but a couple of mines got a bit too far forward there so in the end banelings will be able to connect but this is now becoming proper scary because it's not just widow mines it's liberators in the mix as well Cyril does not have a lot of money in the bank he's just gonna run through all these liberation zones as the hydras are battling a bunch of marines in the center of the map Seems like that was a very successful cleanup in the end for Cyril. That looked risky, that looked like it was going to be something that's very hard to run into. I'd say that was about as good as it was ever going to go for Cyril. Yeah, I mean, Clem, he was just pushing that kid on the playground one too many times, and he fought back, and he fought back hard. Cyril now allows himself a little bit of time to breathe, but it is just a moment here. He's got a lot of Ling Bane, has to be so careful against this number of Widow Mines, but... Oh my goodness. Once these lurkers are out, and they are out, this will help him a lot, I feel. Uh, yep, lurkers also already have seismic spines. The range upgrade, speed upgrade, not quite there yet. But just having range is already going to make the life a little bit easier, as there are still a few widow mines in the mix. But mines are a lot less problematic once we get the hands on lurkers as a zerk. And with a couple of vipers on the way, Cyril survived a very scary moment there before those lurkers were done. And I think especially that top side of the map, maybe Clem had a few too many Marines here in the center. And maybe he needed a few more because he had so many Winner Mines in the mix there. But Clem obviously is not slowing down. He's also transitioning. He's getting up to Ghost. Never started plus three armor. Fizes it up now, so that's going to be a bit late. But it's not the most impactful upgrade as we have a Winner Mine drop into the triangle. Nice target fire on the medevac there by uh, Cero. The two mines go off, but hey, minus three drones for four Winner Mines and a medevac. That's a trade that Cero will take any day of the week. Certainly is, certainly is. Cyril trying to expand here in the bottom. Ooh. Will keep it alive there. Clem gets out by the skin of his teeth. And behind all this, he has been expanding like crazy, taking his sixth base behind all this aggression. The APM on these players is absolutely crazy. And I see a lot of command centers going down as well. So taking a little bit of a page out of Spirit's book, and that's exactly what he needs. Both these guys have weathered the storm that the other guy is setting. Daryl he's actually started getting some transport overlords going this could be a massive drop into the main with lurkers and that that could cause trouble yep there is a lot of lurkers Ooh. but clem is all over it does i think caught a glimpse of it and he's gonna throw down the scan so if he didn't see it yet he should absolutely see it now as there are a lot of links here a couple of widow mines will fire very good connections there for clem as clem still has a big old army in the center of the map and sure Cyril is gonna send eight lurks into the main base but Cyril needs to make sure that he doesn't lose too much at home as there are a decent amount of ghosts here in the mix as well widow mines again are gonna try to deal well, as much damage as possible to the Zerklings, but Cyril's doing a great job in making sure that these mines also fire at the Terran units. Ah, the Lurkers are in the main base amidst this madness, and Cyril's super supply block, by the way. A Liberator will show up, and that will absolutely help against these Lurkers. I think what would have been nice with this is if it was combined with a Nidus or something, so we actually could get some anti-air out with this, because this, this has been shut down, but Cyril, he's not just about one thing at once, but his supply, it is running a little bit thin here, and he has to really, really deal a lot of damage to Clem to keep him back for a long period of time, and he's also got a lot of Widow Mines on the field, Kev, so his army constantly running through these Widow Mines in the center of the map, I think. Uh, yep. Ooh. Round two, round Whoa. two. Oh, well, that was close to another big hit there. Yeah, Cyril found a lot of damage there, but lost a lot of units, lost a lot of expensive units. There is another Widow Mine that could fire and will fire. In the end, Cyril gets to clean up on all four of them. 
155 supply without a penny in the bank never bodes too well for the zerk but it's still hive tech there is an infested there are two vipers but the ghost count ban is at 10. it really does start to feel that clem is just doing it once more even if he looks like he's struggling a bit in the quarterfinals <laughs> or in the earlier rounds we do have a burrowed infester that lands an absolutely amazing fungo and Sarah's gonna combine it with the parasitic bomb Cyril takes about as good of a fight as he could have taken, but he is not going to get every single ghost. Got a lot of them, though, and that should at least give him time to get more units out. That was amazing for Cyril, and he's still in trouble, which really goes to show how well this game has gone for Clem. I mean, it's gone ridiculously well for Clem. I'm going to look at the orbital counts right now seven orbitals on the map so clem he's rich and despite losing a good 24 SVs in that previous attack he's still back up to a close to 80 and he's making more orbitals as this goes on they are so well matched for one another kev like so unbelievably well matched but clem is continuing to tech up it's soon going to be ranged liberators they do have plus two armor upgrades as well so they're not easy to take out 10 lurkers at once yeah 10 lurkers and a couple of additional investors which just goes to show that even if Cyril was broke he does still have great income he even has a whole bunch of arrows favoring him at the moment which is fascinating since clem has so many bases with a scan clem is going to be able to get a couple of the drones from the low ground there at this point obviously they are both getting close to the armies that they wanted to work with and it truly comes down to the engagements and who gets the better start as we have another burrowed infested the previous one was a 10 out of 10. Sarah was hoping to repeat that performance yeah i mean he needs it right like I, I say he needs it he's on 200 supply still but clem's done such a good job of cutting the map that creep spread hasn't be able been able to go beyond a certain point and that's not through lack of trying that is because Clem has just been the absolute warden of the middle of the map. He's controlled it. But now Serral feels like, mm. all right, I can move out a little bit. And this is my moment here. What is interesting, though, is that Clem boss, once upon a time, 10 plus goals, is now down to only four goals. That is a bit scary. And that is definitely not the amount of goals that Clem would like to have against all these lurkers. Sure, we've got way more liberators right now. Advanced Ballistics is out. So that's obviously going to help a little. But I think four goals is just not enough. Like, it doesn't feel like it, but Clem lost 17 ghosts in this game, Ben. I mean, it's been crazy. This, a little bit of a battle here for a base. <laughs> and I mean, oh, cheeky, cheeky drones like, aha! But Command Center is going to land or uh, want to land where that is. And I, I dare say it's going to be Cyril having to give that one up. But he is taking his posture in the center of the map here with a huge army. Getting a Nidus on the go as well. And oh, another juicy fungal in the mix here. He's been doing really well with these spellcasters. Hey, yep, he saw the army of Clem step over it. So Cyril had vision of it. Clem did not. But it wasn't quite the entire Terran army. It was basically 10, 12 by units that were trailing behind. It was a good fungal. But Clem obviously able to turn around and still uh, just kind of fight the rest of it off. He is going to get a cancel. Oh, couple burrowed banelings, Ben. Obviously, you don't really want to use it too early as we have a Nidus attempt in the main base. And this is going to be annoying for Clem as Clem is maxed out. And I don't really see a whole lot of firepower here. These links are scary with Adreno Glens and plus three melee. You don't want to see 40 of these links going to town on your infrastructure at home. No, you certainly don't. You don't want to see a bunch of lurkers pop out either, and that's exactly what happens here. Clem, pretty quick to react, even though he was supply capped, so couldn't actually make any units to deal with this, and the Liberator response has been good. I almost wish there was more of a committal here from Serral with his Nidus, but, you know, there's crazy stuff happening on the map right now. Scary though, right? Because obviously the more you send in, the more you could potentially lose. This is going to try to prevent this base from becoming a planetary fortress. Uh, Clem will know that he cannot hold it for now, so he's going to cancel that, and he is just running for the hills, and not a ghost will fall. If there is one thing that is certain, is that Sarah has done a great job in reducing the ghost count over and over again, as now 20 ghosts have died. I mean, those are serious numbers for only a 19-minute game. They certainly are, they certainly are, and Sarah's doing a good job of taking two fights at the same time here, constantly popping in with that Nidus, almost using it as distraction Nidus at this point, and Sarah, or rather Clem, did somewhat overreact to it, sending a good 10, 12 Liberators over there. Let's have a look at the unit count between these two guys. In fact, we've got more Liberators than anything else on the field right now for Clem. He's down to six Marauders, six Marines, six Ghosts, 10 Widow Mines, six Medivacs, and 12 Libs. He is definitely most likely not happy with the army that he's got right now and being sent to run here, there, and everywhere by 
by Serral. Yeah, and the initial response of the Nidus was good, but the last two have felt a little bit messy. And Saros is doing a great job in turning this into a 1-2 point. Is going to run into this army in the top side of the map. Once more denies that base from becoming a planetary. Abducted a few liberators in the mix as well. Uh, okay, running down that ramp is difficult with Widowmines there. Sarah will bleed out a few units in the end. But it basically seems that Sarah has said, All right, Clem, you've got the amount of bases that you do. There is little that I can do about it. But I'm going to do my absolute best to make sure you cannot get your hands on that very pivotal 12 o'clock base. And Sarah's even taking the base right next to the main of Clem, which I think would be incredibly hard to mine from with all these liberators that are out. But yeah, Sarah's still going to try. This was a bit of an eager attack over here. You know, the, the one health ghost uh, accompanied by the two liberators on top of the spore crawler. But Serral, he's making magic happen, man. Like, if you thought about this game 15 minutes ago, 10 minutes ago even, with how much he was struggling, this is almost a different player with how much he's come alive here and how much he's the one now making Clem work for it. And yeah, these two guys, they are running at a pace. It felt that there was Second definitely uh, a real sw uh, shift of momentum where at one point it felt that Clem was dictating the pace, he was all over the place, he was catching Sarah out of position. Over the last two, three minutes, it really does feel that Sarah has been dominating, has been able to find better traits. But obviously, one bad fight is all it takes for a Zerk to still be in all sorts oh. of trouble as a widow mine there gets an amazing hit on Love Links and Banes. We do have an Infesta coming in from the right side that lands a perfect Pongo. We've got a couple of Parasitic Bombs going down, but this was still incredibly pricey for Sarah as well. And Clem's supply did not dip anywhere near as much as I think Sarah was hoping for. Sarah can not only not prevent that base from going up, he actually ends up losing his own base. As amazing as the spellcasting was there, Ben, I still classify that as victory for Clem. That was not the fight Sarah was looking for. And any kind of shift that happens, that is definitely the start of something as Clem. He is now working around to the other side of the map. And these Widow Mines, oosh, they are constantly getting good, good connections here. I mean, the friendly fire is big as well. But these fights, this last minute, if, if the past five went good for Serral, this past one went terrible for Serral. Yep, Serral could no longer deny that base from going up, and now the fight is just not really working out either. And Serral was maxed out, created a bit of a piggy bank for himself, but that piggy bank has been drained. Morphing that many banings is expensive. The lurk account is back to zero. Serral's army is just really not all that impressive, and he needs to make some magic happen with the Lings and Banes, but Lings and Banes off creep against Clem. Most of the time, that does not end well for Zerg players. This time around, it seems like it doesn't end too well either. I mean, sure, a couple of Liberators got abducted, one or two went down, but Clem is still maxed out and is now just taking out another base of Serral. And that means that Serral's economy at this point is pretty much non-existent. And I was looking at it before this happened, they were pretty <laughs> close and resources lost, but now it's definitely all about oh Clem. God. And he's going to catch a few ghosts here, but Clem micro back to these Liberation Zones. I mean, yeah. they are both fighting like crazy. There is something happening at the top here, but Clem's there to greet it. They are both yeah. running so quick. You know what just happened? Serral killed his own hatchery with the Vipers in the bottom side of the map while that big no, fight no. was happening. Yes, it was three Vipers leeching energy and Serral's economy that's already in the dumps is now even worse as he killed his own hatchery there with the Vipers. Uh, that's not going to help Serral max out anytime soon. No, it isn't. And Serral is quick to greet this as well. The dance of the spores and liberators and the drones and... Oh, Clem, he's not doing just one thing at once, though, is he? He's moving down the bottom here, and he's going to see this base that's like, wait a minute, why are there drones moving back and forth here? He killed his own hatchery, but Serral, he's not going to go down without a fight here. That is a lot of lurkers back to try and claim that 12 o'clock base. Clem is quick to start repairing, but Serral, he's broke as a joke. Yep, Sero really is ultra broke as Liberators are going to siege up in the range of that mineral line as well. At least the Lurkers got that base at 12 o'clock and that's going to make life a little bit more difficult for Clem. But Clem's supply is still looking mighty fine. Clem's army is sexy once again with nine ghosts, plenty of widow mines, 15 widow mines at the moment scattered around the map, making it incredibly difficult for these links and banes. There is a shocking investor coming in from the top. So once more, Sero lands an incredibly nice Fongo, drops the parasitic bomb. Oh as well i mean sarah is taking some amazing trades here but i'm afraid it's just too late because he cannot keep this up he's got no economy the army that he's currently working with ben is the army that has to win the game and i don't see how you take out all these liberators and planetary fortresses that clem still has 
No, I mean, he's bleeding. He's bleeding bad, Kevin. This isn't just a flesh wound. This is full-on artery damage, and Serral knows it. Clem, 2-0 up in this series. Clem's playing real damn good, man. Like, he was on the ropes for a good portion of that game. Like, it really felt that Serral was more than back in it. Yep. But, man, he is tenacious. It was just a beautiful game of StarCraft where it felt that Clem was doing a lot of things right initially, was uh, doing a great job in splitting up his forces, finding uh, beasts, uh, bits and pieces of damage. But in the end, it's just at one point he just kicks into overdrive. Like It's really hard to put your finger on it, but like, where did it go wrong for Serro? Because Serro clearly had a lot of good fights, landed a lot of great fungals, uh, reset the ghost count a couple of times, did a good job in denying bases. It's just, it was pretty back and forth. It felt like a ping pong match at one point where it's like, looks good for Clem, looks good for Sarah, looks good for Clem. But the moment that, yeah, I, I don't even know. Clem is an animal, Ben. It's something about this tournament that truly brings out the very best in Clem. Where, how do you explain the guy that's struggling with Wayne that is down 0-2 against Elaze and now shows up and plays these two games against Sarah in the semifinals? It, it truly is magical. ESL regionals for Clem are what Mondays are for Big Gabe, you know? Like, they just, <laughs> these players, they pick their moments, but, you know, picking a Monday or picking an ESL regional, I'm picking the regionals, you know, any day of the week, but yeah, you're right. Clem just, he knows when to turn it on. He knows when to peak. It, we This is the Clem that we want to see when it comes to that international stage, isn't it? Because this is the kind of Clem that could really go all the freaking way, because... Serral's not playing bad by any means. I know there might be one or two people that say, what about those swarm hosts? What about killing your own base? That's only because of the chaos that Clem is throwing at him and the speed of the game as well. He doesn't make those mistakes against just anybody. It's about where, how these games are actually going. And I mean, sure, killing your own base will never help, but I think at that point, the game was already looking very dire, right? There's a reason why that happens in the first place, and that is because it was a very stressful situation. This man is looking amazing so far, but he's not uh, there yet. He's down, or well, he's up to zero. Needs one more window. This is a difficult map for Terran in this matchup. Let's see what he's going to bring to the table. On the top right side, uh, representing Team Liquid, up to zero. This is Liquid Clem. And it's spawning over in the southwest side here. On Ancient Cistern, representing Basilisk, it is Serral. Definitely so far not the score that Sarah wanted to see. It's not the score that anybody wants to see. Being 0-2 down against somebody as good <laughs> as on the other side of the map to you. But if you think about it, you started you're still where you started. You still have to win three maps. Doesn't get correct. more or more doesn't get more, doesn't get less. No. Gets less and for I, your opponent. Yeah. And obviously this is, I think, out of all the maps, I think it's Sarah's favorite map at the moment <laughs> in the uh... He loves it. Sorry, Ben. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, I said bless. I sneezed away from the mic. I was hoping that you didn't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Serral loves Ancient, so maybe this is the moment for him to get back on track, get a bit of momentum going, and then obviously there is still everything to play for. Like, you can look at it game by game, and then it's just that game one was an odd one, right? Where basically all the timings, the initial planning kind of got thrown out of the window with that crazy start we had where Clem did pick up those queens and all those drones early on. That second game, though, honestly, at one point, a very honest, straightforward, macro-oriented game. But we have seen it in the past, and obviously that's still the case, is that it's very hard for Zergs to break Terran on Grass 1. Often you get them on Wobbly Legs, it's close, and it feels that you're reaching that tipping point. But it's, it's just difficult with all these planetaries, all the choke points, and Serral definitely tried. We had Overlords flying into the main base, dropping Lurkers, we had Nidus after Nidus. But it's still so hard to find success in multiple locations at once. Often you find some success, but you're going to bleed out a lot of units to create that success in the first place. I think this map, it should be a lot more doable for Serral to find more than a bit of damage, but for things to truly add up and uh, actually truly get what he's looking for with the aggressive maneuvers. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of avenues here for Serral to work with. The map is definitely a large one, isn't it? Uh, which can definitely favor you as a Zerg player, feeling a little bit safer. These cheeky builds that uh, Clem threw out, especially in game one, where he just ran in with a bunch of Hellbats and Marines. Not necessarily as fearful here. Tank positions can obviously be good, but 
If you said it's one of his favourites when it comes to playing this matchup, then I absolutely believe you. Clem has opted for a far more normal build this game, the 3cc on one gas, going for the factory and now starport. And this is probably more Serral's comfort zone, if we're honest. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely a bit flustered about that previous game where it did feel that they were just going for it. They were absolutely swinging, throwing everything they had at one another. Almost felt like we were watching a bit of Archon mode there, right? It's like, all right, you control that army, I control this army, and multiple guys were just having some fun. And it's just Clem and Serral truly bringing, I think, their A game in that previous match. First one was a bit wild, was a bit all over the place, and it's a tiny map where I feel like there is less room for all that multi-prong aggression that we saw on Gress 1. Uh, obviously, it is raining as well, right, for these guys. Uh, they've been here before. They're no stranger to playing grueling TVCs against one another, but you don't always handle it the same way, so we'll see if both of them can still bring the A-game here in Game 3. As we have the Reaper and the two Hellions looking for freebies. Super important for Serral right now to just have a clean start, right? Sure, not what you were hoping for, not the start that you wanted in the semifinals, but now you can start by having a messy early game where you lose a creep tournament that you're not supposed to lose to, or even one or two drones because the queens are out of position. Like surviving the first six minutes, being on point, and then taking it from there, that's obviously key here for Serral. Yeah, just reset. Anything that's been bothering you, just reset. Like, I was just thinking. For either one of these players, like if, if it was to end right now, like th those tweets that come come after where it's like, oh man, I played terrible. It's like, no, like th those wouldn't come out of them. Like they just have to know that their op opposition is playing damn freaking good. And I like what you said about the Archon mode because the action going on between them and it takes two to tango in a game like that it really does. Like they are both playing phenomenally fast. I was getting like all hot at one point and it was a bit sweaty. I was like, oh my goodness, like it's almost stressful watching them perform at this level and we have a couple of links running into the third base here of Clem where obviously for Sero it's a lot about just seeing what's up here get it any scout off he saw that one of those refineries wasn't taken yet but most importantly he sees that everything is sort of normal now the Hellions are having their dance with the Queens and this is obviously where there is no room for error so we have a couple of creep tumors going forward double eBay goes down double Evo goes down it really does seem like we're going to do that previous game all over again. Some nice, honest, straightforward, macro-oriented play. Link Bane focused on the side of Serral. Uh, but this map, I do think it's just a whole lot better for these run -bys. Uh Yeah, me too, me too. I, I do want to kind of uh, touch on the builds that are doing a little bit, especially Clem's build here. He went for one safety banshee only, no gas with it or anything like that. But he's up to 12 Hellions here, Kevin. Look at this. They are just going to march into this natural here. Uh, Serral's got himself into a nice position, though. There's no drones to speak of over here, and these queens does knock out of the way, but look at that. It's a trap. The Zergling surround at the top of this ramp. Oh, Serral oh, oh. sniffed this one out and dealt with this about as beautifully as you can, and is he even going to lose a single drone here? Not one drone went down to that. That was about as perfect as the defense was ever going to be. I mean, there is this one Banshee that's shipping away at his hatchery, but obviously that hatchery is not going to fall. That queen on the ramp preventing all the Hellions from entering the main base, even without Banelings ready. Serral dealt with that in an absolutely magnificent manner. Hellion count was indeed very high, was a bit higher than I thought it was, but Serral... That was perfect. Literally perfect. The way that he created the choke point, the way that he got the wrap around. Uh, don't think he really could have asked for a whole lot more as we enter now minute seven with a 14 worker lead and with Clem throw away all these Hellions it's going to be so much more difficult to contest creep right now it's going to be almost impossible I mean we're going to have these little dancers going on in the middle again which are going to be good they're going to be fierce on both sides but this is definitely a different game to what we saw on Grass Van between them because Clem threw a bit of a skill check there at Serral and Serral well, he answered it with 100% accuracy. That was, uh, not many people in the world can do that. I think the, the list is literally down to like maybe one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, right now, Sarah's going to be feeling quite comfortable in this game. It's not out of the woods just yet, obviously. Clem is beyond good when it comes to this matchup. And right now is a little bit of a dance, a little bit of a tango, trying to get up a fifth base behind all this. And right now, for this little moment in time, Clem is ahead in upgrade, so he has to be careful. Yeah, I think he's going to siege up. This is very far away from the hatchery, so I don't think there really is any need here for Sarah to take a bad fight up the ramp, as there are a couple of links morphing into bailings in the top side of the map. We're going to try to keep a close eye on those, as Sarah is already thinking about dealing some economic damage. The 1-1 upgrades of Sarah are close, not quite done yet. 
As the Bailey is actually being brought back to the center for a split second there. That was a bit odd. Burrow is rather quick again, so worth keeping an eye on as well. Daryl, big fan of the Burrow these days. It has been a, it has been a, a ability of wonder in the past for many, many players making true names of themselves out of the ability, getting themselves out of true tricky situations as well. Daryl, you can see him sharking on the map with a good bunch of lings. I do believe there is bailing support with them. That scouting CC going to go plant as a fourth base does get to spot it out and Clem. He's respecting this massively. He's running back with his entire army. Yep, and now the Marines are going to run headfirst into Baneling. So, Sero actually gets a pretty good trade. That means that the tank is a little bit exposed as well. Sero feels that Oof. this is the moment to go for the tank. There are a couple of units of Clem also active in the top left side as that bench is going to help out, but it cannot save this tank. Uh, I would say overall, a lovely little set of events there for Sero, who did not really utilize Burrow there yet. Would have loved to see him just plan down a couple of Banelings. Since Clem clearly feels that he wants to keep on pushing. And I felt like there was a moment there to maybe set up a few traps. Not quite happening yet. As I mean, Sero is obviously uh, probably not ultra happy about the fact that there is no creeper heading towards these rocks at all. But I do think he's confident because 87 drones. All the units of Clem are still far away from his own drones. Far away from the bases. Oh. That's right when I say that, Clem is going to stim into this bottom side base. And it seemed that Sero for a split second there lost track of the army. Oh, yeah, that, that that lack of creep here for Serral is definitely biting him in the ass a little bit because Clem's able to bounce between these two bases and the micro. The micro is insane, actually. And that fight before, that tank on the high cliff, I don't know how many bailings it single-handedly took down. It was definitely more than Serral wanted it to. But Serral does hang on. Now is the time that he can get that creep spread out rolling. But Clem's left behind a few Widow Mines and yet again that are doing work. And here, Clem caught a little bit with his pants down. One, one Widow Mine. Just get a bit of a shot off. The other Widow Mine's actually very juicy hits lovely splits out of clem and Serral. cleans it up to some extent but does he really i i would say for the links and banes that i was perfectly fine keeping the tanks at bay as well as there's not a fight happening in the bottom right side a couple of marines are on the wrong side of the metavax so those will fall but running off trip into a planetary there i think it's just a little bit too much of the good stuff for Serral. So Sarah is going to decide against it. I mean, that entire fight then took place five seconds before those two, two upgrades. So I think to set back the Marine count as much as Sarah did there before those upgrades kicked in, I'll definitely classify that as a little Sarah victory. 33 banelings were just produced just then on that production tab. And look at that swell of Zerg. You can tell that Serral's feeling much more confident in this game. But he has to be careful where he follows the Frenchman. Because there is Widow Mines wherever he goes. But feels Widow like he's smelling blood in the water. He's coming Widow from two angles. Widow Mine drop in the bottom side of the map. We'll get ooh, ooh. 11 drones. Good target firing as Serral wants to get the planetary. The SCVs are doing their best. Well... I want to say that, but a couple of them are not actually repairing. We didn't just have that attack, as we also had an attack at the triangle. So both players taking some severe economic losses. Uh, I want to say, though, that in a weird way, that wasn't even all that bad for Clem, because Cyril did throw away a lot of units there. And it's not that he killed 40 or 50 SCVs, right? He killed 14 and a PF, which is nice. But Cyril's not exactly sitting on 3k, 3k. So he does need to be careful. Burrow Bailings will find their targets. Good job there by Cyril. Really good job, and there's no. Oh, this oh. one could be. Oh, that could be super juice. That could be super juicy. That is the kind of connection that if he hits that, game changing. Game changing. Absolute game. It's gonna go over it again. I mean, it's oh. almost. Oh. Well, that the scan scans. actually worked yeah. against him almost. Well, yeah. Now in the end, Clem still lost a couple of units. I'm not sure if Sarah would have used it otherwise, since the entire army was not quite above it. Most importantly for Sarah, though, is that he was now able to just get a few more units out. Hive tech is kicking in. Vipers on the production tab and adrenal glands. All the hive upgrades that you want to see. Yeah, Lurk, and then that's gonna take a little while, right, before lurkers are truly out and they'll get seismic spines and adaptive talents. As it seems that Sarah is gonna try to maybe do something about that base one more time. Nice split up there on a single unit. As we have more burrowed banelings all over the place. Clem is run into that base in the 9 o'clock position. That has to be already a little bit low on HP. Marauders are going to oh. tank the links and the banelings. Beautiful play there by Clem. How oh, he hopped the marines inside of the Metavax. But he knew those marauders were tanky and they'd be able to get a few more shots off. Lovely move. That was a really great move. And if you use the bailings to splash on those marauders, they're not going to get the job done. Either way you look at it, it was a nice trade for Clem. And 
He got reset back to three bases not too long ago, but he is back up to five here. And he is expanding with the PFs. What's his number of orbitals at the moment? It's not super high, three. It's getting two more orbit or two more command senders, two PFs going down as well. I mean, this, this is a good game. He's missing out the plus three armor, but everything else across the board, they are just both going at it, Kev. There's fights everywhere you look. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. There are still a couple of barrel banelings, but he wants to make sure we don't miss him. I think that Clem is going to try to slow it down for a split second, right? Just wait until these PFs finish up. Know that you can actually start moving out very comfortably, as we've got Liberators on the production tab, we've got Ghosts on the production tab, as we even get a Sensor Tower here in the dead center of the map as well. The beautiful thing about the StarCraft that these two have been playing is that it's not just kind of like, oh, 40, 50 minutes late game, it's non-stop action, it's non-stop trading, and both of them just spending their money over and over again as we got double parasitic bomb landing in the middle of like eight medevacs that is going to hurt this planetary fortress will fall so i was going to be more than happy with that exchange yeah i mean if not just for the pf but the fact that he gets away with most of his army and getting that chunky damage on those medevacs they are not cheap whatsoever and Clem really wants to be utilizing those starports for those Liberators right now. Not more Medivacs, but his number's still really high. Clem, though, he was pretty all right behind it. Did have a command center to lift and mm -hmm. re-plonk down on that location. So he's not truly hindered. But I am worried about what, what is Serral going to do about all these Liberators that are starting to go up here. Well, we've got Hydras, we've got Vipers, and don't forget that, that Lurker Dan has been up and running for a while. Seismic Spines is done, Adaptive Talents, the speed upgrade for the Lurkers is now fired up as well. Seros is going to try to get one more decent fight here with Ling Bane. Hydra it is off three. You want to say that's a dangerous game? So far, Seros getting away with it. Not a single Widowmine really getting the shot I think that Clem was hoping for, as another BF will fall. I mean, that actually went a little bit better for Serral than I thought it would go. This far off creep, Serral's going to try to attack the other base in the center of the map as well. Low bailing counter, but bailings will blow up the SCVs. Can the links get the job done? That seems unlikely. 19 SCVs and a base for Serral, his troubles there. I don't think it's bad as long as Serral can remax immediately, and it seems that that is the case. I mean, the Vipers are exposed. Immediate parasitic bomb and an even quicker split there by Cero, uh, by Clem. I mean, Serral is playing this beautifully. It may look a little bit scrappy, a little bit messy, but the amount of macro that he has behind this, oh, beautiful Widowmine. That was maybe the one of the best that we've seen connect in the last few minutes here. But Clem, he has to get some damage done. He's been behind economically for quite a bit of time here and trying to move in against the Finn over here. Getting the wraparound here, getting it ready with the Bailings. The Widowmines are good though. The Parasitic Bombs, the splits to counter them. My goodness, the rate at which these guys are going at it. Serral, though, does come out on top, I would say, because he's still holding on strong. And now, next stage of the game begins. He's the one whipping out the lurkers. Yeah, but what Clem is doing so damn well is just being on top of the bases that have taken damage, that have gone down, and replaced them over and over again immediately. You think that he's running on his last few units right now, but that's absolutely not the case. He just plans down CC after CC, loses the planetary, you blink twice, and there is another planetary. This time around, it is an orbital, by the way, at that uh, 9 o'clock base. Oh, excuse me, 3 o'clock. That is a bit surprising, but maybe Clem felt that that is what he needed as we had a big Widow Mine connection there on a lot of links. Another big Widow Mine connection. A couple of these fights by Serral off trip, they have gone a bit better than I think they would go most of the time. And Serral does need to be careful, right? That he doesn't get too carried away. Oh. But he's got the Lurkers, not just a couple. We've got all six of them with all their mighty fine high tech upgrades. And they are going to burrow in range. A couple of Banings in the mix to take out this planetary. The PF will fall. Three out of six Lurkers have gone down as well, though. An expensive snipe this time around, but a snipe nevertheless. I, I, I don't know how Clem just cleaned that up actually that was uh that was crazy and only losing two scvs amidst all that yeah. he actually handled that about as he, good as he could but the thing is serral he's still maxed out he's still big behind all this he's dealing with the widow mines really damn well as well you see it he's trying to drag these widow mines under these medevacs as he flies away and that cc that he just made well that's one that's not gonna last long oh. at all even getting a link down for oh <laughs> look at the supply as well Yep, para bombs there going down once more in the middle of all these medevacs and one or two medevacs that were carrying some pretty precious cargo did go down. 
And obviously that truly hurts for Clem because Clem has been trying to max out, not quite able to. He's building a lot of liberators, but unlike Gresbond, this time around Clem never had the time to drop that fusion core and get advanced ballistics on these liberators. So they are just not as intimidating as they were in the previous game. Certainly not. And that purple, that red on the map, the creep is starting to spread. The mass swell of Zerg units as well starting to swell. And Serral's just not giving Clem the time of day. Clem taking really damn good fights with what he has. And that's a good bunch of Hydras here, which will probably do the job. But there they are, the Banelings rolling in here. And oh my goodness, I think this, Serral finally striking back in true fashion. And wow, puts his name on the board. 2-1. Serral comes out on Ancient. That is the map that he loves. That is the map that he feels most comfortable on. Safe to say the Clem definitely made him work for it. Four PFs went down. And even there towards the end, there was another PF trying to morph in the center of the map. But the Serral links with plus three, with Adreno Glance, they showed up. They got the 20 STVs. That combined with the great fight was the icing on the cake. As we now head into Babylon, though, that is a difficult one. <sighs> what a series so far. I mean... Uh, I checked at one point on Gresbond, Ben, over 800 links went down. Second game here, I think over 600 links went down. It's been a very bloody semi-final. It's been massively bloody. Like, both these guys going really, really well. You can definitely feel it. Like, this is this is a, a, a tug of war, like a real... Once they've, they're both holding onto the same rope and they're fighting for every inch of their life, you know? True uh, Squid Game style battling for a good 25 minutes straight there on Gressvan, but here it felt like just whatever it was about the map just lent itself a bit more to Serral. He played comfortable, he played calm, he never got out of control. You saw it a few moments there, it was like, holy crap, Clem is pushing that creep back really, really hard, but one cleanup and it allowed Serral to just flourish, man. It was like spring just hit and Serral was the flowers, was the garden, it just came alive and then he was allowed to do what Clement to him the whole series just putting on relentless pressure yeah it was far from a walk in the park though because at moments it no. did feel that Cero was spending every penny that he had and he was very committed to some of these attacks and off creep uh it is possible that some of them just go terribly wrong that the widow mines do find the perfect targets that the planetary barely survives right there were a lot of risky attacks in that game so definitely not smooth sailing but in the end it was good enough Babylon, this for me is a very interesting one because I really wonder what Serral's game plan is going to be. If he's going to have the exact same approach in the previous game, I think it's hard to pull it off on this map. It's a lot harder to be that efficient with your run buys. We'll see. Very excited for it. Not expecting Clem to open up with as many Hellions as he did though. Because we can't forget about that fact, Ben. Clem, his opening didn't quite work out and he's still turning into one hell of a game. And that by itself deserves a standing ovation. In the top left side of Babylon, we are looking at the main base of the man who is still on match point of making it into another finals of the ESL Masters Europe Regionals. Previously, the DreamHack Masters Europe Regionals. This is the record champion, Clem. And spawning over in the bottom right hand side, he was 0 2 down, now 1 2. Maybe Momentum is back with him. It is Serral. He already op he, he did it again, by the way, Kev. He went for this uh, 15 out of 14 hatchery and then starts making his overlord at 14 out of 14. So maybe it's down to like the sizes of the map where he's just like, you know what? I don't want to deal with a Clem Reaper this early on. And the pool's very, very early as well. So definitely lined up, obviously very, very purposeful. And Serral is the kind of guy that he's obviously very smart. Like, he, he's one smart cookie. Like, anything that he does with Zerg, I'm I'm 100%, 110% on board with. So this is something that he just feels is better against uh, a player of the likes of Clem on these kind of maps. I'm sure Eric will be very proud of it. <laughs> I'm sure Piggy's very happy. But yeah, it could have something to do with the size of the maps. That is maybe not something that you necessarily want to do on every map. No uh, maybe on Maybe on maps like this where the Reaper does show up very early, it gets the several stamp of approval. Yeah, no gas at all either. And eight links? That's a lot of links. That is, is a it? lot of links. Yep, especially for a gasless opening. And this is now already a bit unique because we are familiar with like, okay, switching things up a little bit in the early game when it comes to the build order that gets your queen out a bit quicker. 
Uh, and then you can make less links. So obviously you save lava, you get more drones. But if you then still make eight links, that is not what we expect. Now Clem is going to scout with the Reaper, but what he won't see is that eight links are sneaking to the other side of the map. So what he will see here are a couple of drones. He's obviously it's important for Saro not to lose any workers, and he doesn't. Queen gets out. At this point, Ben, Clem has absolutely no idea that there are eight links. It really is important where this Reaper goes. The Reaper is heading home. So Clem, I think, is his command center is going to get delayed, but I don't think he's ever going to get a kill with uh, the, the Reaper around, right? Obviously, these are slow circlings. A big delay, but I don't think this is ever going to net into a kill. Definitely a big delay, and definitely it's an investment right like this is a big investment and wow big old scv pool coming down the ramp here there will be a few marines popping out and clem i don't know whether this is exactly what he planned but uh. i mean it was very very spicy between the two all things said and done i think clem handled that about as good as you can yeah he showed a lot of respect it's better to overreact perhaps than to underreact and he didn't want to pull just a couple of scvs and then find himself losing way more it was almost perfect even right because for the longest time not a single scv went down as we had a bit of scv stacking on these mineral patches i think very nice micro in the end on both sides did Cero get the confirmation there is another CC? Yes, he did see that, by the way, with the Zerkling. Cero did catch a glimpse of that third command center. That's obviously very nice, right? Does not have to sacrifice an Overlord. No, certainly, certainly. Three CC against three hatch. S still, like, this is the first gas that's been taken by Cero this entire game, by the way. That first 12 that trickled in there. He does have a gas on his natural and his main. So this lines up for him taking very potentially a lair he's making a few extra links here just being kind of cautious being safe did he see the second barracks with what he's scouted by the way no so he doesn't quite know whether it's like a factory follow-up from clem or a two racks so he's being a little bit safe getting that speed link on the go as well uh, just respectful play like you, you can never fully know if you haven't scouted and they're both like clem also has no idea what was going on in the main base of uh Cyril at this point nope that reaper never actually got into the main base but Saro, his overlord, will get the confirmation that there is a tech lab there. The tech lab is spinning, and he's well, he doesn't actually see that it's connected, but he obviously sees that the, amount of of the factory. Yeah, he saw the amount of marines, he saw the factory and the starpen and the top side. So, obviously, at this point, Saro has seen everything that he needed to see. Does drop the two evolution chambers, man, before the lair. And I want to say, on a map like Babylon, I think it is a little bit risky because that obviously means sure you're going to have good upgrades on your links. But Lair is going to be later. Bailing speed is going to be a whole lot later. And having to deal with Clem and a whole bunch of Marines on Babylon without bailing speed, that seems like something straight out of Zerg Nightmares. These next two minutes are supremely important for Serral here. Like, he needs to fight really damn well. Because if you have a 1 1 upgrade lead with Ling Bane, and primarily just Ling, I suppose, then all right, you're in good shape. But this next minute where he doesn't have that. Yeah, this is uh, this is where Clem needs to get damage done. Third is landing for him. He gets his own two engineering base going up. But this build that Serral's kind of well done here, it's definitely a weird one. Like I, I, I kind of like how it's lining up for him. But yeah, he has to be definitely careful. Yep, as you said, this is super important for Serral's tournament live at the moment. There are only twenty-two links. Clem is decisive. Steams forward immediately. Wants to get a queen. Serral with perfect saves. In the end, one queen will fall. Clem goes deeper as he wants to get a second queen as well. Gets two queens so far at the cost of only, I think, well, two marines have died, and uh, that Reaper obviously went down. I don't think that was a bad start for Clem, but obviously with the way that Clem is playing and the build that he's going up against, it's important to keep momentum on his side. Keep on pressuring, keep on pushing back that que uh, creep, and obviously try to take as many fights as possible until bailing speed kicks in. Is this a normal fourth for Zerg to be taken, by the way? This far, far upper right base, because it seems so far away creep-wise. It's not the first time. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> just wondering, just wondering. But, oh, misses the transfuse there on that queen there. So that's another little bit of a blow there for Serral. But Serral, he's surviving, man. And that 1-1 one, one is about to hit, which is a big deal. We talked about it. And right now, he's not really allowed these medevacs to deal the damage that they're truly looking for. And Clem flies over this base. It's like, oh, you don't have your base here? It's going to be on the north side, isn't it? It's only it's one of two. It's one of two. So he's going to start working his way around over there. His 1-1 one, one is halfway done here, but doesn't want to take a fight too eagerly. 55 army supply for both players at the moment as Clem needs to be careful. There are a couple of Bailings there on creep. The Bailings may not have speed yet. 
<laughs> you can see he's like do i see jump here it's like nah i can go in a little bit deeper throws down the scan gets the creep tumors it's important for clem that he takes out all of them though that would be an oversight as he actually ignores that one creep tumor that's right on the edge that could give Cyril that launching pack of creep staying around that creep tumor was revealed clem was within striking distance of it not taking it out could be a very pricey mistake here for clem Ah, uh, it's also lots and lots of vision and Cyril uses time. He just runs over to the space. He's like, oh, okay, this is pretty naked. And oh, he has to run through all those lings. And that is eight SEVs just biting the dust immediately. And remember, these yeah. lings are more upgraded than the Marines right now. And look, they're all grouped up. Nice evacuation by Clem. But I A mean, kill? Cyril, Cyril is in so much better shape. He killed the CC. Yep, he killed the fourth CC as well. There are no cans on the side of Clem as Clem was microing his Marines in the top right side. So not only does Clem lose his 12 SCVs, he loses the 400 minerals for that command center. That was supposed to be the fourth base as well. The tank is all by itself. It's going to get picked off now. A lot of these links are in a bit of a pickle, but sarah has got to be absolutely delighted about how that link counterattack worked out. It worked out really well, and Clem's probably kicking himself a little bit. And Kevin, those upgrades, that was the one lead that Serral had. Now they're equal, but 2-2. Two, two. Going to be coming online in the next 30 seconds or so for Serral. So if he can just hold on here with what he has, and, I mean, does he even need to hold on? I think he can start pushing a little bit, but that tank Ooh. positioning on the ramp there, that was a big, juicy hit. Big green explosion of Banelings there. Yeah, and that was a perfect shot for Clem, but Clem obviously knows that he needs a bit more. This creep tumor, I really think, is the one that changed a lot there. Because it did indeed give Saro all the information of where the units were maneuvering. And Saro's trying his luck one more time with another link counterattack. This one, not quite as successful, does get the tank. Uh, but that's about it. Sarah did lose a lot of links there. Obviously still needs to be very careful, right? Because the army is a pure link bane and it is very hard to fight off creep, especially if tanks are well protected by choke points or high ground. Certainly as that plus two, two is now finished for Sarah. If he wants to take a fight, it's going to look the best it will do over the next few minutes. And Clem, he's being very cautious, being careful. He has a severe lack of AoE in his army. Like, his factory unit count has just been shattered time and time again this game. Mm -hmm. He's got only four tanks. Obviously, it's not something that I think Sarah can be 100% certain of. Knows that he picked off one tank that was left behind on the top side of the map, behind the mineral line, but... I think it is hard as he does oh. find two out of the four tanks on siege all by themselves. Yeah, this is where the upgrades once more will absolutely shine. Links could split off, go into the third base as they're going to go for the command center again. Clem has already lost his fourth TC once this time around. It does get cancelled, but that means that he's going to be a three base Terran for way longer than he ever desired to be. Oh, and GG. Serral ties it up from being 2-0 down these last two games. He's come more than alive here, Kev. That was a masterclass. That was a true masterclass. Serral saw the army in the top side of the map, and he said, I'm not fighting it. I am sending all the links with the 1-1 one -one upgrades to the other side of the map. All the SCVs dying, the kill on the command center. And while that chaos was unfolding, Serral also saw his opportunity to dive on the remaining units that were still on the top right side. Uh, Clem has got to be fuming a little bit there, right? Because that is just not the way that he envisioned that game to go at all. And there was no reason for it to go like that in the first place, since technically the start was weird, but Clem handled it well, right? He had a strong economy. He was going to get himself obviously in a very decent spot entering the mid game. It's just that the first link counter was devastating. I mean, it was beyond devastating, honestly. And it, it just, he never really got to get going. And he, he, he did a decent build he got kind of caught off guard a little bit but yeah he didn't react badly he like sees the queen he sees no links and he's like okay i get home really fast with that reaper i deal with the push kind of thing the these barracks openings that he's doing where he's got like quite a few barracks quite a lot of marines it feels like serral has got a good handle of what to do and when to do it even when you go gasless like that gasless is not normal granted he slowed down his terran opponent a little bit but Daryl, he's getting the plus one, plus one, and he's feeling very comfortable. He knows how to how to work with it. And right now, Clem just needs to breathe a little bit because even though he's been playing damn good in those first two games, especially, mm -hmm. he needs to reset a little bit. Down to one map now, and it will be Neo Humanity to finish things off. One hour. Let's do it. Neo Humanity final game. That is a super interesting one because both of these players do not shy away from the late game. They're both confident in it. But obviously, Sarah will also know how difficult it can be to break the Terran if we do end up splitting this map altogether. So 
I'm curious to see if Sarah is going to play with a sense of urgency where we can see that he's clearly trying to avoid that scenario or if he's willing to embrace it. And we do enter that ultra late game where the map is going to get close to being mine now. The ghost counts get crazy high. Got all the high tech units. This was the semi-finals that a lot of people were looking forward to. And four games in, I think it's safe to say that it has delivered. I think the previous game, obviously Babylon, we expected a bit more fireworks there. But it is all good because it gave us our favorite. And that is the rubber match. The all-deciding game five to figure out who is going to be the first finalist in the ESL Masters Europe Regionals. In the top left side, we're going to take a look at the main base of the man who's been there more than anybody else on this planet. Representing Team Liquid, this is Clem. And for one, maybe final time this evening, representing Basilisk, it is Serral. Whenever I say Basilisk, I always want to say Basilisk Gaming, but I know it's not. But it's all those ge good game gaming and something something gaming something something gaming you know the, the koreans they they changed me kev <laughs> i know man but i'm proud of you for not going for it we're very happy with you yeah i got i got i got told off one time in private and never again <laughs> never again <laughs> What an amazing semi-finals has been so far. Obviously, guys, this is only the beginning of the Europe Regionals broadcast. After this, we've got Max Pax versus Spirit. A ultra exciting semi-finals for various reasons. Very different reasons. But for both of them, I think we can say, Ben, the biggest series that they have ever played. As neither of them has ever made it into the finals of the European Regionals. And sure, they have both found a lot of success online. Spirit once in a while had a decent run offline as well, but this is such a big moment for both of these players, and I'm ultra excited to see how that TVP will play out. But first, we're gonna go and, add, and enjoy Neo Humanity. Two guys that have a very rich history with one another, two players that often push each other to the limit, and I think especially on that Grass 1 game game, uh, Ben, we got to see that once more. Yeah, we certainly did. We certainly did. Clem is going for an SCV scout this game. He's been kind of passing it up a little bit during this series. And I think that's what Serral kind of clued into as well. Just finding out when his opponent's doing it and whatnot. And unless you're super clued into how to, well, when you SCV scout, if you're doing it every game, you get to find out whether that creep spread from that hatchery is a little bit more than normal. And you really have to know your timing super damn well. I suppose Clem does because... You know, he's not one of the best in the world in this matchup for nothing, but he does get to see these first two lings out on the map, which have been causing him, you know, a little bit of scouting trouble, a little bit of problems uh, behind it all. And here he does get to catch at least one of them, which for Serral, it's like, damn, of all the ways that I ran, I didn't want to run into that SCV. And I like what Clem's doing this game, by the way, Kev, utilizing that SCV to block this third, because mm -hmm. I think I spoke about it the other day. You don't want to take the other third. You're left with just one option here, and it is to take this third right here. What would be the other third? I mean, uh, you have to go through the gold. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. I was about to say, I was like, yeah, which other third is there? Oh, uh, no, no, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's lovely. Uh, it is indeed lovely so far. Clem is going to be more than pleased with how this has gone so far. For Saro, it's frustrating, but I can't imagine this is his first rodeo, right? As he does have a happy little circling in the main base of Clem. It's one of these lair. moments. Two base lair. This is... This is getting a little bit out of my comfort zone. Uh, <laughs> this is... Oh. Sorry, Ben, but Cryptomore gets sniped immediately there, and that is a problem. As the SCV tried to get a little sneak peek into the main base, I think at this point, Clem is also picking up the fact, like, wait a minute, something is just not quite right here, right? I know I did a good job in delaying your hatchery, but now I'm doing an amazing job. I'm doing an even better job than I ever thought I would, as that drone does manage to morph into a hatch. And that was awfully close, by the way, because Serral was a few speed. minerals short of 300 minerals go ahead overlord speed here like with the roach warren as well this is this is starting to give me like old school vibes from a long time ago when it was like a nidus uh flying overlords anything you name it but this could get very spicy very quickly i don't necessarily know what he's going to be throwing at clem but it definitely has to be something a little bit wild whether he's going to fly a bunch of dudes over i mean that'd be absolutely crazy and weird but he is absolutely delaying his eco here significantly. Mm -hmm. And he, I think he's hoping that Clem committed a bit more to Hellions here this game, which Clem didn't do. And Kevin, uh, that is, this is crazy in game five here between these two. 
Uh, yep, there's a Reaper hopping into the main base. That is a big moment, I think, for Clem, as Clem is going to see that it's relatively empty. We'll now see the lair, but we'll see a lack of units. We'll see a lack of queens. Should be getting ready for this immediately ASAP, and that is what's happening as a bunker goes down in the natural. We have a couple of dropper lords morphing near the main base. I guess Sarah's going to pick up everything, drop into the main, and yeah. macro behind this, Ben. As committed and as crazy and as aggressive this may look, it is not actually 100% all in because Sarah has been building non-stop drones. He's going to pick up all these roaches and go into the main, I think, right? I I, I don't know at this point, Kev. Like, Roach he's getting double evo. I, I think he's respecting the fact that Clem has actually adapted very well to this. And he's like, you know what? You know what? You've obviously... Oh, I love that as well. Utilizing that overlord with the queens there, dropping a bit of a creep just to land down those creep tumors. That can be very annoying. Pulling out a TLO, if you will. Oh, can kill it with the heli and oh, Clem, that's so cute. That is so cute. Realize that he didn't get both of them, but Saro is going to drop some more creep on the left side there and we'll still try to get some creep to my stuff going. Yeah, this was cool and creative. And maybe if Saro saw something that he was a bit more fond of, he would have fully sent it, right? But he was already droning off. After the nine initial roaches that he made, like nine was the number, he stopped. He was building drones already way before those drop lords were morphing, way before the queens got picked up and were sent to the other side of the map. Uh, as cool and creative as it is though, Ben, like did that accomplish a whole lot other than that it scared Clem for a bit? I mean, it scared him. It's got him a massive upgrade advantage here. Like the engineering base halfway along, plus one and plus one, very far ahead. And that drone number getting up to 65, 66, obviously the big dream here. That is huge here, Kev. Five barracks on the way, by the way. Three already done. So already moving on to eight barracks before your third's even landed. Clem is thrown off massively this game. This... This is a weird one to to finish it out. And yeah, that plus one plus one has only just started here for Clem. Serral's looking at a timing here that could be phenomenal. He is still getting an infestation pit on one of you, so it's not going to be a massive all-in from him. At least it doesn't look like it. Yeah, no, I, I don't think there truly is a, some sort of a magical timing where we're going to be like, oh, one more roaches and maybe banning speed. Because in the end of the day, right, as confused as Clem probably was about all of that, and I'm sure that he was scared and maybe he overreacted a tiny bit, Clem is still heading into Marine Tank, which happens to be very good against everything that Serral is currently working with. Yeah. The tank count is at four. Like, I, I don't think it is all that bad for Clem. He's probably very confused still, and it's going to be annoying for him to basically spend a million scans all over the place to clean up all these crypto because Cassero's doing a great job with that. What a moment to bust this out. He's still flying around with the Drop Lord, now dropping a couple of crypto on the right side of Clem's natural. Like, this is cool. All of this is very cool, but it doesn't change the fact that Marine Tank hits like a truck, and Cassero's still gonna have to be very careful. I mean, it does hit like a truck, but right now at this moment in time, he does have an upgrade advantage and Clem's getting caught a little bit off guard here. Lovely pickup there on those tanks and Queen's oh, roaches in the Lord. bases. Oh my goodness, Serral, you absolute machine here. Yep, this is actually finding very decent damage and it's been a very small investment for Serral as he even saves the Drop Lord with the Queen's and leaves one of the roaches behind very casually as a Serral getting 11 SCVs here. I mean, Serral says, mate, you've got some good multi-prong. I have good multi-prong as well. And at home, the transitions are bodily smooth, right? We have a high, we have Vipers on the way. Lurk then finishing up as well. This is beautiful, creative, inspiring play by Serral. But it still doesn't change the fact that he's going to have to be careful. But so far, it does feel that whatever he came up with, man, whatever he is cooking, let the man cook because it smells delicious. I mean, it does if you're a Serral fan, for sure. If you're a Clem fan, you're thinking, how does he get himself out of this situation? And honestly, I'm starting to really worry for him. Lurkers are out on the field. They're actually out already. More joining the fray as well. Those queens do get shut down, so Serral may be getting a little bit carried away there, but dropping the main. Look at the SCV count, 44 to 72. Clem's being forced into oh. a super all-in situation here, and it's not one where you've got a better army. Nope, and Clem is actually just ignoring these roaches. The Marines were right there, but Clem is done in dealing with them. He wants to start attacking, but as you said, man, Lurkers are out. Lurkers do not quite have seismic spines yet, but there is a Viper in the mix as well. Tank gets abducted. That is a lot of Marines, but Zero's army, especially on creep, is so powerful oh. and should be too much here.